I'll begin this morning in Luke chapter 4. Amen. And verse 16, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up far to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And they bare him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceedeth out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? Verse 28, And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, and rose up, and thrust him out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill, whereon their city was built, that they might cast him down, headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way. Amen. One paraphrasal said, his own hometown. Amen. Now turn to Matthew chapter 13. Amen. And it came to pass when Jesus finished these parables, he departed thence. When he came to his own country, Dr. Kenneth Taylor says, his boyhood home. He taught them in their synagogue insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? and his brethren James, and Joseph, and Simon, and Judas, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country, and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works because of their unbelief. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Mark chapter 6 records the same episode. And he went from thence and came to his own country. And his disciples follow him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph? And of Judah and Simon are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk, 
and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief and went around about the villages teaching. i like to talk for a little while about a second chance for Nazareth. It was natural for Jesus after he had fasted and prayed 40 days and nights, been baptized by John, filled with the Holy Ghost, Spirit of God upon him. It was natural that he would want to bless his boyhood home. It was natural that he would want to go back to his own home church and be a blessing to them first. Begin his ministry if possible. He tried it. Amen. He went to the church where he had journeyed many a time as a child. He grew up there. He was 30 years old now. They all knew him. Well known in the city. The carpenter of Nazareth. Amen. Very common in the town of Nazareth, Jesus was. Amen. But now, he is filled with the Holy Ghost. He has fasted and prayed 40 days and nights, locked horns with the devil in the wilderness, and won every battle with thus saith the Lord. Praise God. Amen. And here he comes. Man, what a chance. What an opportunity for Nazareth. They have the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, in human flesh. The greatest preacher that ever preached. Amen. The greatest religious leader that ever wore shoe leather. But they didn't know it. They didn't look at him that way. They didn't realize it. When he stood up and read, and they marveled at the gracious words that was proceeding out of his mouth. They was like <coughs> some native Georgian that heard Jimmy Carter speaking as he's running for president. Jimmy Carter had changed his voice and his manner of speaking. Amen. And the Jimmy Carter that we got for president was not the same Jimmy Carter that they had known all their lives. And one of them said, he's changed his voice. He did it because uh, the corn-type Georgia vernacular wouldn't fit too well in the White House. And it worked for Jimmy Carter. He made it all the way to the White House. Amen. Even if he did change his voice until he was a mixture of John Kennedy and a Georgia cracker. Amen. He made it to the White House because he changed his voice a little bit. Amen. And put on a pretty successful campaign for the Democratic Party. Amen. Well, that's kind of the way they looked at Jesus when he came to his hometown. Amen. He said, these gracious words are proceeding. He's changed his voice. What's happened to Jesus, the son of Joseph, anyhow? And they marvel at the gracious words that proceed out of his mouth. Amen. Oh, glory to God. They rejected him, you understand. You, re you heard me read it. I'll not belabor you with the details. Uh, amen. But they dragged him to the brow of the hill. They were so mad at him that they was going to throw him over that hill. I mean, they intended for the same thing to happen to him that happened to Judas later. When Judas fell down the hill, the Bible said his bowels gushed out. They intended for Jesus to have that same kind of a fall down the precipice of Nazareth. But he gave them the slip. Amen. Now he has begun his ministry in Capernaum. Now he has called his disciples around them. And he has sent out the twelve two by two. And probably the seventy also. And great fame has gone out uh, in the land of the carpenter of Nazareth. 
the news trickles back. Amen to Nazareth, of course. Amen. And eventually, as it preaches all around Decapolis, and great multitudes follow him, and the fame of him went throughout all Syria, the Bible said. Decapolis is those ten cities that the Romans built. Amen. Down the east side of the uh, Gilead chain. Amen. And the... Uh, uh, Golan Heights area all the way down to uh, Amman, Jordan ten cities uh, Decapolis, Decca, ten amen, ten Apolis, ten cities uh, and Decapolis was that region of ten capitals of Roman fame amen, and they all turned out to hear Jesus all Syria from all the way to Damascus they walked they traveled, and great multitudes followed him. What great success he's having. The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk, the sea is calm, the thousands are fed, and great miracles, signs, and wonders are done. And finally Jesus, after he's turned the water into wine, still the storm-tossed sea, uh, two times probably already. Amen. And fed the multitudes with loaves and fishes. Uh, amen. Thousands of them with five loaves and two fishes. What great miracles. Eyes have been opened. The dumb talk. The lame walk. His itinerary carries him back close to Nazareth. After he speaks the parables. After he's already preached the Sermon on the Mount. After he's already gained great fame. The news of him has been carried by his disciples. Throughout every village, city, county, province. Of the whole area. He winds his way back up the hill. And he gets close to home. And that old feeling comes back. Praise God. To go back to his boyhood home and have a great revival in Nazareth where he was blessed and repay them in some measure the good that he has gained from being raised there. Amen. And so Jesus goes back to his boyhood home. Oh, how well I know the feeling. Amen. How well I know, amen, the frustration and disappointment of it all. Amen. What do they say? Amen. When Jesus goes back to his hometown and his disciples follow him, all this entourage, some of the multitudes are following him. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. Same one that he had read his first message out of. Same one probably. Amen. That he had preached his, his uh, first message in Nazareth in. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence hath this man these words? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him? And even such mighty works are wrought by his hand. I'm reading in Mark 6. Is not this the carpenter? The son of Mary? The brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon? James and Jude both. Amen. Would gain fame. They would write one of the books of the New Testament. But even they at this time didn't believe. On Jesus Christ, the son of their own household. Amen. And not, are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Amen. Jesus registers his disappointment. He finally gives in to a fact that is difficult for us sometimes to take. It's hard for a preacher to understand why he just can't go home and stay there and minister there. 
Why does God send preachers across the sea? Why does God send preachers across the country? Why does God call men and then send them out? Why can't they just stay home? Didn't the demonic of Gadara get to stay home? Amen. Yes. Once in a while, Jesus lets somebody stay home. Amen. The demonic of Gadara had so many demons cast out of him. He had such a testimony that he wanted to follow Jesus. He would have followed him to Africa. He would have followed him to China. He would have followed him to the ends of the earth. But Jesus said, go home to thy family and friends and show the great things that God hath done for thee. I'm glad to say that once in a while, God lets a prophet stay home, but not very often. Amen. Jesus registers his own frustration. Ah, that's my translation. That's my uh, a version of it. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin, and in his own house. Amen. Oh, amen. I'd like to have stayed home. I'd like to be there now. Amen. Because there's no place like home. Those old hills get to calling me sometimes. And sometimes I do go home. For a little while. Once in a while. Amen. Brother Jeff. I get to go home. And hold a revival. Amen. They still love me. I'm still their favorite son. I was a preaching prodigy. Started preaching when I was 16 years old. And even the sinners in my neighborhood. Came to hear me. I marveled at how God. Used that kid of a boy. To preach the gospel. I heard Jim Riggles, amen, say that he comes out with things that I've never heard older preachers even preach. Amen. Jim Riggles was a sinner man that lived in the area. Amen. Yeah. Oh, God, that's a long story. Amen. But even the sinners was impressed by the change that came in my life. But I ought to tell you, that didn't last too long. Amen. I go back now, Brother Jim, and hold a revival meeting and go great guns for about three days. For about three days. Amen. It's Brother Collins. Amen. But after about three days, it's Junior again. Amen. You know why? Because a prophet is not without honor, save in his own home. Amen. Those old feelings come back. Those old attitudes come back. Those old memories filter back through. Amen. And after a while, the prophet is without honor, save in his own country. There's no use to fight it. Jesus was frustrated by it. Amen. But you know the reason Jesus went back the second time to his own hometown only to be rejected and could there do no mighty work. Amen. The Bible said except heal. He healed a few sick folk. Amen. Just a few insignificant miracles. In his own boyhood area. Praise God. Why did he do that? Do you think possibly he did not know that uh, he would be rejected? I don't know. Amen. You think possibly it was that he wanted to really be a blessing to the place of his nature? Or, well, not his nativity, but his boyhood home. Amen. Bethlehem was the place of his nativity. Amen. Do you think he really did want to be a blessing? Or 
Maybe there's one other lesson out of it. He wanted to demonstrate to us the importance of God's go ye. Amen. I've seen preachers sit around at home. Amen. And try to preach to their own people. Amen. I know one in Illinois. He was raised up right in church. His dad and mom. Amen. They didn't even have too much in the way of respect to say about him. Amen. His dad and mom would eat dinner with him every Sunday. Amen. And his dad would say to me, and talking about his boy, said he, he used to throw fits when he was a kid. And he said he would bump his head against the floor. And he said, I'd help him bump his head against the floor after a while. Oh, how many times he's told us about helping his boy when he'd throw fits, bump his head against the floor. Now he's grown up in church. Now he's a preacher. Amen. Working at a factory over in Evansville, Indiana, and driving back and forth, uh, working for Chrysler Corporation. Amen. And trying to preach once in a while in his own home. Almost every time the folks would <coughs> take the tuck head when he got up to preach. And when he saw him taking the tuck head, he'd get mad. And he'd get real red in the face. And he'd Boy, he'd give it to them then. <clears throat> Amen. And that just made it worse. And they'd take the tuck head more. Amen. The problem with Austin was he was trying to preach in his own home church. Right among his own family. And even his daddy still remembered him bumping his head against the floor. Amen. He couldn't overcome it. And you can't either. You may try, but you're going to have to have more power than Jesus if you do. You may try, amen, but you're going to have to do better than the Son of God did. He said he could there do no mighty work. But then there's another possible lesson. He wanted to give Nazareth a second chance to discover who he was. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Terrible thing. To be the Son of God and know it. And none of your loved ones know it. To be the Son of God and know it. And your brethren not even recognize it. Amen. Oh, God. But... Nazareth gets a second chance. Hallelujah. I don't care how good a preacher you are. I don't care how good a prophet you are. You can be a good mixer. But being a good mixer, there's great danger in it. You become increasingly more common. You get on a first name basis and sometimes a nickname basis. Amen. And you lose your respect as a man of God. Many times, the better mixer you are. Sometimes if you stay a long time at a place, you got to be as strange as Ralph Cook, as mean as Buster Wilson, and as oddball as L.L. L. Collins. Amen. To stay very long. Amen. You got to be such an oddball that folks can't hardly ever figure you out quite. Amen. And then you can stay a while maybe. But usually the longer you stay, the more common you get. And the less respect you have. Amen. And the less people jump. Amen. When you holler. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh yes. Praise God. The first thing you know, if you're not careful, you become too common to the people. God give us wisdom to know how to go in and out among the people. Amen. Amen. Kings of bygone years kept themselves separated from the people. 
a big huge fence in China, amen, separated the ruling class from the commoner on the street, amen. I went through that city, the forbidden city. That's where the ruling class lived, amen, in Peking, China. It's been kept through the years. No war has completely destroyed it. No tyranny has torn it down. And today, if you make a trip to Peking, China, you can take a trip through the forbidden city. You can climb those majestic steps and see those castles and those magnificently architectural uh, uh, buildings of the government of bygone dictatorships. Amen. You can see the thrones where they sat. Amen. But they kept themselves separated from the people in so much that the people had no contact with the ruling class. Amen. There was a great big gap between them. The pharaohs did the same thing in Egypt. They ruled separate from the people. Their lives were secret from the people. It was not until the archaeologist spade upturned their history that we learned the secret lives of the pharaohs of bygone era. Why did they do that? They knew, amen, that the more you mix, the more common you become, and the less effective you become as, a, as an authority in government. So the army, they change sergeants once in a while. If they don't change sergeants, amen, they change uh, recruits, amen. They never let the generals get too familiar with their soldiers because if they do, they lose their ability to command. But we want a preacher that's down to earth. We want a preacher, amen, that gets down with the people. We want a preacher that walks among us, that is one of us, that speaks our language, amen, and that we can call on in the time of need. We can reach out and touch. And above all, one that can touch us. Amen. But sometimes, if we're not careful, we will not respect the anointing of God on that man of God. I'd be the first to tell you that I'm nothing. If I lose it all today, amen, I'm not lost much. You can't take me back any further than where I've been. I was born in a one-room log cabin and raised in a one-room log cabin in the hills of Arkansas. I didn't have a shirt nor a suit nor a necktie when I started preaching. Amen. And uh, I was nothing. And so you can't hey, chop me back hey, too far. But what I've already been there. Amen. Oh, but Jesus was given Nazareth a second chance. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. They rejected Him, and when they rejected Him, they lost the anointing. Amen. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon a man. You shouldn't just make him a joke like everybody else. You shouldn't take his message too lightly like everybody else. Oh, that's little Asher. Amen. Oh, that's Brother Jim. Oh, that's, that's Mark. We know his down sittings and his uprising. Amen. Oh, that's old Jeff from Oklahoma. Amen. Oh, yeah. We, know, we knew him when he was still repairing robots. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. But if we reject the anointing, Reject the man, we lose the anointing too until God gives us the second chance. I wonder how many people died in Nazareth 
while Jesus was preaching in Galilee for a year, year and a half? I wonder. They die here every day, don't they? Don't we have an obituary every day in the paper? I think they died there every day too, don't you? Amen. I wonder how many people died at Nazareth. They died without a Savior because they'd rejected this hometown boy. Praise God. If we reject the man of God, we reject God's work in any particular church. If God's really working there, we may be signing our own death warrant. We may be signing our own end as far as revival and chance and opportunity and time is concerned. The Bible says time and chance happeneth to them all. But what if time and chance happens and we fumble it and we've only got one chance to get the ball? We caught the rebound and this is our big chance to score for our team. Amen. But we play it up too long. We mess around too long. We don't shoot for the basket quick enough. And before you know it, we're surrounded by half a dozen long arms that keep us from putting the rebound back. We only got the ball once. Amen. We only got our chance once. Only one life will soon be passed. To reject the man of God and the anointing on him is to reject the very one that God would use to save our children. Amen. We tear that man of God down no matter how anointed he is, no matter how much a man of destiny he is, we reject God's opportunity for our children to be saved. Amen. God help us. He gave Nazareth a second chance. Jesus returns to his boyhood home. You know what they said? Are not his brothers and sisters here with us? Amen. Joseph and, and, and Judas and, and James, are they not all here with us? His three brothers? Amen. We know them, and, and they're, they're not to, too much to talk about who this guy think he is. Amen. And the Bible said, after Jesus had gone through all Galilee doing mighty miracles, mighty works, that he could there do no mighty work, amen, except for healing a few sick folks because of their unbelief. And he marveled at their unbelief. Amen. Faith is a very important thing. Confidence is a very important thing. Amen. Ah, oh, yes. Praise God. But if people no longer have faith in you, people no longer have confidence in you, they may even think you live right. They think I live right at home. Amen. They think... I had the real thing at home. My dad told uh, one of the preachers that visited him, Harry Greaves, uh, in the hospital, said, yeah, when Junior got saved, he got the real thing. Amen. But he didn't try to imitate me. He didn't try to follow in my footsteps. He didn't follow the trail that I blazed. For the glory of God, at least for a long, long time. Amen. Oh yes, time and chance happeneth to them all. It's coming. Amen. The ball may land squarely in your hands tonight. 
It may be in your hands today. What are you going to do with it? Nazareth, he's back. You're getting another chance. He's proven himself to be the Son of God, to be the prophet, amen, that he claimed to be. The Spirit of the Lord is really upon him, like he said it was in that first message. He said, no, we can't believe it. We can't receive it. Amen. If we could, we just look around and see his brothers and sisters around here. We was raised up with them. Amen. Just common, ordinary folks. Amen. One of his disciples even said when he was uh, 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 invited to follow Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. You know, he proudly wore that name, Jesus of Nazareth. Even though he never had one good revival in Nazareth. Even the devils. Amen. They recognized him as Jesus of Nazareth. Remember that demonic of Gadara? Amen. The legion cried out, Jesus of Nazareth. The devil called him Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. He wore that name, Jesus of Nazareth. But he never had one good revival in Nazareth. Now Nazareth. Gets a second chance. When I say a second chance, I say a second chance when his ministry was full bloom. Amen. Nazareth didn't realize what they had when Jesus was raised there. They didn't realize what they had when Jesus grew up the carpenter's son and worked magic with wood. And they thought he just had a cunning gift. When he could make a yoke that wouldn't go gall the ox. And he said in later years, come unto me all you that labor, labor and are heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. They say in antiquity that Jesus could make a yoke that wouldn't gall the ox. They just thought it was some cunning magic that he had. They didn't realize that God was helping him all along. Amen. That God was overseeing his life all along. Amen. And trying to outfit him, if you will, to be a blessing to everybody. Amen. Praise God. Calvary becomes reality. Jesus dies and rises again from the dead. Mary follows him all the way to Golgotha. Finally a full-fledged believer, even though sometimes her faith even faltered. Amen. Pentecost has become a reality. Hallelujah. And because Pentecost has become a reality, and the message has been scattered far and near of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of God. James and Judas both get saved and become members of the church in Jerusalem. Praise God. Hallelujah. And James becomes uh, one of the prayer warriors of the church of Jerusalem. They call him old camel knees. And Jude wrote the last book before Revelation, the brother of the Lord, Pentecost, and the move of God, and the spread of the church, give some folks in Nazareth another chance. Hallelujah. And when God moves, that's our chance. When God passes by, that's the time to get in. Don't wait till the train's gone to try to board. Board it. Wow. Boarding's good. Stand with us. And let's pray this morning, Lord. Touch these broken remarks. Challenge our hearts to our opportunity. Help us, Lord, to get on board. Oh, glory to God. While getting's good. To make the most, oh, Lord, of our ministry. And calling for the glory of God. We ask it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. 
as we sing, we invite you to become acquainted with Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of Man, the Son of God. Is He giving you another chance this morning? Is He giving you another opportunity? And is it possible He'll never pass this way again? He never went through Nazareth anymore. He never preached in Nazareth anymore. The only way they found Him, James and Jude went to Him. And you can come to Him this morning. You don't have to go to Nazareth. You don't have to go to the Sea of Galilee. You don't have to go to Jerusalem or Golgotha. You can come to Jesus Himself this morning. Come on, as they sang, we invite you to an altar prayer. Let's everybody pray. Amen. So many years, so many lambs were offered up. But all the blood that was spilled could never.